Kathleen? Good afternoon, Larry. Hi, Kathleen. And Bruce, are you online? I got Kathleen. I'm not hearing from Bruce. Because he doesn't say anything. Oh, okay. That's right. unusual. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Hello, hello. <laughs> hey, there he is. Okay. We were making fun of you, Bruce. Okay. No, no, I heard you. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Okay. Let's okay. start. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hello, you. everyone, Hi. and welcome once again to the Sloan C Leadership Development through the Institute for Emerging Leadership in Online Learning, IELOL webinar. Uh, we are very fortunate to have our uh, co directors, Dr. Larry Reagan and Dr. Bruce Shalu, along with leadership faculty Kathleen Ives as our presenters today. With that, I would like to now hand the microphone over to Larry so that uh, he can start our discussions today. All yours, Larry. Thank you very much, Darren. Thank you for your patience in getting us um, up and operational today. And a special welcome to everybody who's taken the time today to join us for this program, this webinar. Uh, this is a, uh, a, something that uh, Bruce and Kathleen and I have been looking forward to for quite some time to be able to share with you um, some of the activities of the Institute, uh, share with you the, some format, um, some ideas about what we're trying to address with the program, and then specifically try to get to any questions you might have about the program and how it may or may not fit your needs. Um, we're, we're pretty confident in the idea that we need to have a matchup that goes both directions. That is, the program has to have uh, the objectives and goals that serve you, uh, as well as you need to be in a certain sort of position, if you will, or, or a place in your career where you're going to maximally benefit from the, uh, from the Institute. So hopefully by the end of today's program, we'll have addressed those topics. And uh, if not, uh, the, the opportunity exists for us to also engage uh, in individual emails, if you wish, or uh, we'll communicate with you however we might. So um, with that, Bruce, would you like to say hello and welcome? Would be happy to, uh, to join uh, Larry's uh, good comments and to welcome everyone to, uh, to this session. We did this for the first time last year, and we're really excited by uh, the interaction that we had, the questions that we had, and, and the follow-up. So we're looking forward to a, a similar good session today, Larry. Thank you, Bruce. Kathleen, would you like to say hello to the group? Sure, welcome. I'm so glad to be here. As Larry said, we've been looking forward to this webinar for a, a really long time. Um, I'm going to shut off my microphone because I'm working out of my home office and my dog is barking, but I will make sure that doesn't happen when I speak. <laughs> welcome. All right. Thanks, Kathleen. Um, Kathleen's kind of a, well, she's a very special person anyways, but she's special to this program because uh, when we did the first uh, institute in 2009, Kathy was in our inaugural group as a participant. Uh, Bruce and I were there as well, and uh, as faculty, as co-directors, but uh, Kathleen was with us, and she has been with each program since that year. So she brings a very valuable perspective uh, to, the, to the discussion today of uh, what the experience has been like for her as a participant and as an observer, and then also as this year she's moving into a faculty role. So it's a, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to get sort of a full scope of uh, her experience, and, and uh, she'll be sharing some of that with you as well today. So the Institute, just by way of uh, an overview, the Institute was started in 2009 as a outgrowth of some dialogue that had been occurring primarily within the Sloan C organization and the board, uh, at the board level, about the um, necessity of preparing our next generation of leaders. Bruce is going to share with you in a moment a few of those details. The arrangement came about because of Sloan C's uh, longstanding leadership in, in leadership development around online learning and Penn State's sort of unique position as having been one of the early adapters of online learning starting in 1998 with Penn State's World Campus. Uh, it was agreed upon that we would sort of champion our resources and come around a program that could um, 
sort of highlight the, the, the best of the field, if you were, uh, and, um, and also serve as, a, as an aggregate source so we can bring together the best speakers, the best thinkers in the field, and, um, and develop, uh, start to, to work on the professional development uh, for our next group. So I'm going to ask Bruce if he would go into a little bit more detail about some of the ideas behind the Institute. Bruce? Larry, thanks very much. Uh, happy to do that. As you said, we're entering our fifth year. The discussions of about what was to become IELOL really started about six or seven years ago. And in a sense, uh, as Larry pointed out, we were really looking at um, coming up with a strategy that could help develop the next cadre of online leaders. I, but I must say to you that uh, while we thought we were right five years ago, six years ago, that certainly has become the case with the uh, evolution, indeed, some might suggest revolution in terms of what has happened with, uh, with online learning. Uh, we have seen it emerge over the short span of IELOL into the mainstream of, uh, of higher education. Uh, we now have this kind of MOOC phenomena. Don't get me started on that today. Uh, time for discussion maybe um, in, in August with, within the institute. But in part, our, our real focus uh, or thinking was some of us, most of you excluded, are not getting any younger uh, or graying, and that the leadership, the notion of leadership in online learning is changing. Uh, many of us came up through more traditional faculty ranks and then somehow e evolved or emerged into some uh, level of activity in online learning. And what we're seeing very clearly now are more and more individuals who are moving through their graduate programming directly into online learning in some uh, facet or dimension of online learning, be that instructional design, administrative responsibilities, um, uh, and growing number of leadership activities, again, as online learning has kind of moved into the mainstream of uh, what is happening in, in higher education. So we, as Larry mentioned, we did offer our first IELOL program in August of 2009. So we're coming up on our fifth class. Um, we have had just under 100, I think 138 graduates from the program. Um, we limit enrollment to 40. It has become, uh, and we're going to spend a few minutes later on talking about the admissions process, it has become um, a much more selective uh, as more and more individuals have sought uh, to participate. But one of, the, one of the really great dimensions of the program, and, and, uh, and Kathleen, as Larry said, has been kind of on both sides of this, both on the student side and also on the, on the faculty and leadership uh, administration side of this. We really have created a community. I, uh, th th those 138 graduates remain very engaged, very involved. Uh, we meet them on a regular basis, uh, both in person and at Sloan C conferences and online. And um, so we really have developed, I think one of the things we wanted to have happen was to develop a, um, a true learning community focused on leadership. And so I think one of the dimensions for your involvement in this program would be uh, direct engagement in that program. So that's the kind of the background and the context of uh, where we are with the program. I'm going to turn the mic over to Kathleen, uh, and she can spend a few minutes talking about uh, the kinds of things that we do there. Great. So Thank you very, very much. Um, so basically, I'm going to talk a little bit about the program goals. And I, I, as um, both Larry and Bruce mentioned, I think I can talk about them from two perspectives, or from a variety of perspectives, actually. First of all and foremost, um, you'll have the opportunity as a participant to frame the challenges facing e-learning. Um, so many things are impacting us right now. I think the word disruptive is getting overused, but it is very disruptive. Um, as Bruce mentioned, what's going on with MOOCs? Are they here to stay? What about scale? What about quality? Um, what, what policy issues should I be thinking about? Um, what about faculty development and new technology? If I'm a non-for-profit or non-profit institution, what about those for-profits and vice versa? So there are a lot of really key issues that we'll be facing, and you'll have the opportunity to examine um, in the program. The second thing, and I think one of the things I found 
truly valuable was this whole notion of creating a community of emerging leaders. As most of you know, as leaders in online learning, we must constantly be aware of how to adjust, evaluate, and assess the val validity of our programs, our content, and look at those emerging technologies because we truly need to stay competitive and viable in this kind of new disruptive society. But oftentimes, what we'll find is that the vision or the expertise does not necessarily exist on campus. And it's truly through collaboration with individuals from diverse, diverse perspectives that we can become exposed to new ways of innovating, best practices, and a professional network with which to engage long after the program has ended. And I have to say, um, since 2009, I have developed an amazing um, IELOL network um, through this program. It's, it's very active, and we'll talk to you a little bit about that in a few minutes. Um, the other thing I want to emphasize, and this was something that you know kind of hit me when I, when I attended the a program, is that this is really a strategic program. It focuses on things that as leaders we'll be dealing with versus operational activities. So it's really big picture. Now that doesn't mean that informal conversations about operations and tactical issues don't take place. In fact, they do. But that just means that the program is really going to focus on the things that we as leaders would have to deal with um, in our institutions. The program strives to create an interactive and fun learning environment. And I have to say, you will not be disappointed. Uh, people from all over the world participate, so there's a, an interesting blend of cultures. This is definitely not a sage on the stage program. Um, participants and facilitators, I would have to say, are equally involved, and they're truly partners um, in the learning opportunities that are presented. And finally, the program is offered in mixed modalities. In other words, there's an online component and an in-person component. Um, so a portion occurs through the learning management system. Oftentimes, there are a few webinars thrown in. And then there is an on-ground piece. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, I think we're going to a little further on uh, today. We'll, we'll give you a few more specifics about how those interactions, how that blended program is designed. Um, and uh, so, so if you have questions about that, save those just for the moment. Um, I, I want to speak uh, a little bit to the to the target audience. I, I said to you when we started the session this afternoon that it's as important for us to us that this program meets your needs uh, for where you are in your career as much as it is for us to get the right people around the table for you. And um, Bruce alluded a little bit earlier uh, to the fact that this is a, a nomination process. Uh, individuals can either self-nominate or be nominated. Um, there's a support uh, memo or letter that, that has to come from a, um, a supervisor or somebody in an authority of position who says, yes, this individual is prepared to, to move into this. This speaks to um, what we're trying to do with this program. And this is a little bit um, tricky. Uh, I'll just say it that way. It, it, finding the right match to what Kathleen had described as that, that um, operational and strategic component is always a, a little bit of a balance. We do deal with very operational forces of nature in our business right now. So Bruce mentioned the word the MOOCs and disruptive technologies and uh, change, the changing higher education landscape. These are all very operational elements. Um, however, the way we deal with those at IELOL is really helping our participants prepare for how you will now manage and address these kind of topics. What this program is not, and I want to be very clear on this, this program is not best practices in online learning. This is really an emerging leadership program. It is to help you develop your skill sets, your knowledge base, by being exposed to new ideas about how we manage these forces. As Kathleen said, lots of sidebar conversations go on regarding the, uh, how individuals are managing. But we, we don't do a session specifically around um, you know, how to do faculty development in online learning. That's a part of a strategy 
that is about the leadership dimension within your institution, and that's how we approach it. So, so we're really looking at this as for we're looking for individuals who are poised uh, within your organization or your institution to to step into a leadership role. That means you you may have already been identified as someone who is going to be uh, positioned in a, in leadership role, or you may have uh, a desire yourself, aspirations to to move toward toward a, a higher impact type position. So um, we are looking for people who have uh, who exist already perhaps a year or so into a, a leadership position and you're kind of trying to do perhaps a better job trying to improve your effectiveness. We're also looking for individuals who may be considering taking that next step. I, I mentioned the word institutional and organization. One of the things that we've uh, been very pleased with in the past is a real mix, a rich mix of institutions and individuals who are represented in our program. Uh, we have uh, community colleges well represented. We have uh, a traditional uh, research one institution. The privates have been very well represented. Uh, and we have the for-profits uh, have, have participated quite nicely in this program as well. Um, and, and what that brings to the table is a really interesting set of dialogues you can have about the way leadership is implemented in these various organizations. So um, I, I think, again, you develop two things from a program like this. You develop a, a, an appreciation and respect for a wide variety of different contexts in which online learning is being embraced. And I mean very different. Uh, and as well as you develop this network. Uh, so you may not have had someone from, uh, if you're in a, a R1 institution, a research-based institution, you may not have a colleague yet in a for-profit uh, venture. And this is an opportunity where you can make those connections. Uh, we've done very well with attracting international participations. Last year, our program had representation from seven countries which was really interesting when you start to think about online learning as a global initiative. Yeah, it's in the ether space. And um, how different institutions and organizations are approaching their um, online learning initiatives uh, and how they're dealing with, how they're responding to these forces of change is really, uh, I think, something that all of us in online learning need to be paying a lot of attention to. And you'll have that opportunity because we create both in our participant, we make sure that we have a good representation. We also have amongst our faculty members, uh, and I'll speak a little bit more to that in a minute, um, but, but we have a nice diversity in our, uh, in our group as well. So, so uh, think about that a, a little bit. Let me just put one uh, caveat in here. And, and we've had this question in the past. Um, is this program appropriate for someone participating at the K-12 level? And um, our response to date has been, uh, it's really oriented toward second, um, I'm sorry, tertiary or higher education is really the domain that we're focusing in. Uh, it doesn't mean that someone from uh, K-12 uh, market would not be invited. It, it's that the program's effectiveness is going to be better realized by those people in a higher education setting. Uh, we have talked a number of times about the opportunities to expand, and, um, and that's something that is still on our plate. We, we may be able to do that uh, in the future where we build a leadership development program specifically for the K-12 market, but we're not quite there yet. So um, I just wanted to, to be honest and, and put that out there with you. Our uh, faculty group, I mentioned, uh, represent some of the best minds um, in the field right now. They are, are representative of different kinds of institutions. Uh, they, um, they bring a wide variety of skill sets and knowledge and background. All of these folks are really at the top of their game. They're, they're delightful to work with. Uh, and, and when you're here at University Park in State College, Pennsylvania, for the four-day uh, meeting, we encourage you, and, and in the online portion as well, we encourage you to reach out and really engage 
with our uh, faculty members because they are uh, very dedicated to the to the service of the program and they're really anxious to be able to share their knowledge and skill sets with you. Um, the, the group is um, is quite ener energetic and, uh, and they're very much engaged. So I, I think you'll really enjoy that. Bruce and I serve as co-directors of the program, which is really sort of in that management role of making sure that things are running smoothly, uh, that, that as we make adjustments, which I'll tell you, we have made every single year based on the audience we get in. If we feel like we need to uh, change the program and, and adjust and modify, uh, we're able to do that. And so um, that's, that's primarily our role. I see I have a question here about the cost of the program. We're going to get to that in a couple minutes. But uh, the program is not a free program. It is a, uh, this is a four fee program. I'll get to the, the cost here in a little bit. But uh, you need to know that there are uh, costs involved both in the registration as well as your um, cost to get here and to, and to house yourself and so forth. We'll talk about that some in a moment. Um, we've had in the past a, a, a nice um, participation from individuals outside of our normal faculty group. And uh, last year we had a wonderful presentation by Mark Brown, who is at Massey University in, the, in Australia. Uh, he just provided a very interesting perspective of online learning in the um, Asia-Australian marketplace and uh, the initiatives going on there. David Lefebvre, who is one of our faculty members, provided a similar uh, overview of the uh, European marketplace in the Middle East, what's happening in online learning. This year, we're pleased to have uh, Beverly Oliver who is at Deakin University in Australia. And uh, she's, a, she's a theorist and a futurist. And she's looking at the changes in higher education. She'll be joining us as well for this year's program. Uh, in some of these cases, for example, with Mark and perhaps with Beverly, we're not sure whether Beverly will be able to be with us in person. We're hoping that's the case, but we're not sure yet. Um, we use, uh, we will use a technology Skype or Connect Pro or something to bring these individuals into our programs. But You'll have, a, um, uh, you'll have an opportunity to interact with these folks in a variety of different methods. So Bruce, I think I'm turning it over to you to talk to um, the program format. Uh, you are, Larry. Thanks very much. It's timely because there was a question in the uh, chat room about uh, a program outline. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give a broader overview, and then Kathleen will take you through uh, some specifics on the next slide. Um, and this is the format that we have been using um, for each of the five years. It's been tweaked a little bit. Uh, the uh, initial activity, July 15 through the 26th, uh, we label as a primer. It's designed uh, in some measure for us to get to know you, you as the student participants, and vice versa, um, and to begin to develop uh, some strategies that will uh, play out during the uh, remainder of the institute. There is, as Larry mentioned, uh, four days in State College PA on the campus of Penn State University. Um, those are full days. We will keep you active. You, uh, as Kathleen said earlier, uh, you will not be sitting in a seat listening. You'll be up, moving around, and engaged. Think of this more as a, as a workshop, a fully engaged workshop uh, with a variety of activities. Uh, with specific blocks within the program that uh, uh, focus on different aspects of, of leadership uh, in, the, uh, in the online environment. Uh, we then take a bit of a break, if you will. Um, we let you get back to your campuses and your organizations. Uh, and for many of you, that would be the time when, you're, when your institutions are going into the, the uh, fall term, fall semester. Um, so then in mid-September through October, we have a, a three-week program that is, again, online and interactive, which focuses much more on specific uh, activities and projects that relate to your particular setting. And these are projects, initiatives that, in fact, are outlined uh, and discussed during, uh, uh, during the program um, uh, at Penn State. And then uh, we conclude the uh, formal aspects of the program with a three-hour workshop the afternoon of November the 20th, which is, uh, which is part of the workshop series of the Sloan Consortium's 
uh, International Conference on uh, Online Learning, which is held in Orlando, Florida. So that is the um, that's the overview of the components of the program. Uh, quite interactive. We use uh, um, a Moodle uh, as the uh, as the uh, framework for uh, undertaking our work. And so the next question you probably have is, well, what happens? Um, how much time is this going to take? And we're going to turn to someone who's actually gone through this and spent a lot of time uh, with the program, Kathleen. Thanks, Bruce. Um, the time commitment, um, as Bruce outlined broadly, runs July through November. And it can actually vary by a participant, as you can imagine. But as with anything, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So I would encourage you, as you're pondering whether this is the right fit for you at this time, to try and make sure, and I know life happens, that you really will have time to immerse yourself in this because it is truly a gift. And I, and I say that now as a participant. This is probably one of the best gifts I was able to give to myself with regards to meeting with other potential leaders and networking and discussing big issues um, over the six months that I was part of the program. Um, we start off online with the primer or primer, as some people say. And I would say that that takes about two to three hours a week. In the primer, it's, it's really, as you might think, it's an introduction. You're getting to know your um, fellow colleagues as well as your facilitators. Uh, the facilitators start at build a foundation on what, what it means to be a leader in today's um, e-learning environment. Um, and they begin to kind of frame out what leadership looks like. And you all, again, participate. Um, and then it kind of tees up your on-ground experience in State College, which happens in August. And the August program, I have to say, is very much an intensive or an accelerated program for those of you who think about or, or facilitate accelerated programs. It, it is intense, so be prepared. Um, you, uh, you literally are exhausted by the end of those, those four days. Um, so you'll arrive, and the first day um, starts at 1, but that doesn't mean it ends at 5. It goes well into the evening, and it's a mixture of learnings and some icebreakers, um, really um, a very motivable, motivational way to get started. Tuesday and Wednesday are full days. And you'll be doing a lot of different things, from team activities to case studies. And you'll also have time for some individual self-reflection. Again, very, very full days. Um, Thursday, oh, and, and on Wednesday is typically when we bring in some, some guest faculty to engage with you. Um, and that's, that's pretty enriching as well. Um, Thursday is the wrap-up day. It's a half day. Um, again, a very full morning with a, with a closing luncheon. Then we come to the second online portion. And by now, you're pretty much seasoned with regards to topics and areas of interest. And here, we break you up into groups. And you have a facilitator that actually works with you over those, those three weeks. Um, I want to say that as you embark on your IELOL journey, it's really helpful if you think about some of the challenges that are facing you and your institution and come prepared with questions or thoughts that you want to discuss. I think that helps make the program all the more richer as well if you come with some things that you're working on or grappling with at your institution. Um, Finally, to talk about the last day, this is at the Sloan C Annual Conference on November 20th. And this by no means is mandatory. I know for some it's hard to get there. But that doesn't mean you can't participate. We have beamed in people, um, literally beamed them in from all over the world to participate in that session. Um, and this is where we do our final debrief. We see where every, everyone is with their business challenges. And the other thing that's kind of um, exciting and fun is that you will have the opportunity to meet with many IELOL alums. We have a strong um, alum attendance at the annual conference. Last year, we threw a party for all IELOL participants. And I'm assuming that we will do an event or a party or a, some kind of social gathering this year as well. Larry, I'll turn it back to you. Terrific. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, I want to speak a little bit about the international dimension of the program because I think it's another critical aspect of uh, developing leadership. 
Um, we've talked many times in the program and amongst the faculty about how uh, the requirements to serve as a leader in the online learning space are different in many ways from what it's like to be a leader in a face-to-face -face or a grounded program. That is the, the uh, if you will, the competition, the, the environment where we meet each other is in that global environment. It, it's not bound by the walls uh, or geography. And, and therefore, <clears throat> being aware of sort of the broader scope of what is happening around the world, I, I think is absolutely critical. And we have tried to build uh, mechanisms to both gather information about that broader world as well as uh, determine how we can bring that information into our program. So, so we have offered for the last several years uh, pre-conference workshops as a part of other conferences. Uh, there are two programs in particular that we've participated. One is the European uh, Distance Education Network program called EDEN. Uh, we've run workshops at their uh, conference, which is typically, I want to say, in June. Uh, and last year, we also participated in the Asolite uh, conference, which was held in New Zealand. And uh, that is a uh, academic computing uh, educational research type uh, conference. And, um, and again, use those as uh, venues to both share a little bit of the story of IELOL, but also to gather from those groups what their issues are, what the context of their online learning challenges are. And, uh, and so and that has encouraged us to increase the amount of participation we have, both from participants as well as from faculty members in sharing with us the, uh, the stories and the, and the challenges that they face at a global uh, level. So uh, I want to leave that with you. And um, I think what we're going to do here is have uh, Bruce, I believe, talk a little bit about our Facebook page. Absolutely. Yeah, Kathleen. Yeah. Oh, Kathleen, sorry. Um, no, no problem. Um, we have added all IELOL classes to the IELOL Facebook site, which is yet another way to stay connected. So my class of 2009 all the way up through 2012, all have been added and are able to participate. Um, as you can see from this recent post by Mo my Melissa, um, IELOL alums use the site to find answers to problems. We also share successes and sometimes bemoan our challenges. But um, it's just a great place to engage on both a professional and a personal level. And the group has really grown organically. I have to say, out of all the social media groups that I belong to, this one is the most active. And it's just amazing to me always how willing faculty members are to share and to help other faculty members and truly go out of their way to do so. Um, so anyway, this is a wonderful benefit for being in the program. I should add, uh, Kathleen, that this site is also available to anyone who is interested. You, you do not need to be an IELOL alum to join the program. We've had, um, we have 184 members to this page and we've had 130 graduates. So um, lots of people are coming to this and beginning to find it as a place to engage in discussions about online learning. Um, oftentimes, our participants are looking for um, opportunities to have collaborations, or they're asking questions about uh, tools or techniques or methods that are that people have found effective in their own institution. So, so even if uh, this year is not the right year for you, perhaps, for IELOL, I'd encourage you to check out our website. If you just uh, go to Facebook and um, search on IELOL, uh, you shall come up to the, to the page. And then one of us will approve you. Uh, so we do moderate the postings. Um, you, you can imagine why we need to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think you'll find it a pretty rich place for uh, some conversation. So let me go on to uh, the next um, slide where we're talking about the cost of the program. Uh, the question earlier was, uh, is the program free? Uh, unfortunately, we have to answer it is not free. There is a fee. Uh, the fee is uh, 2,999 US dollars if you are not a Sloan C member, if your institution is not a Sloan C member, or you do not hold a personal Sloan C membership. Um, and uh, 24.95 if you are. 
So um, what you get for that basically, of course, is access to all of the program materials, all of the discussion boards, uh, interactions with these faculty members. Uh, and then while you're here on campus on, at Penn State, uh, it includes all of your um, program materials, the refreshment breaks, the, uh, we have a number of breakfasts. Uh, we try to include as much as we possibly can. Uh, we have four lunches in the program and um, in the Wednesday evening dinner, which is a, um, a very nice event. We actually leave the campus and go to a, a local uh, restaurant, a unique restaurant. And, and by the way, we, do, we still do program. Kathleen mentioned uh, a little bit about how, how long your days can be. Uh, it, this is long in a good way. Uh, you're having interactions with a senior. We'll bring in a variety of senior level uh, leadership to talk about uh, how to communicate with your your vice presidents and your presidents of your institutions. Uh, what are the what are the best paths and and how do you set agendas and move those forward? Um, you also get a one year individual membership for a Sloan C uh, to the Sloan C Consortium. Um, I believe the current value of that is about one hundred and twenty five uh, dollars at the moment. Um, and also, just a point, and we don't, oh yes, I, I skipped it. We have the registration for the Sloan C pre-conference session. Now, I just have to stress here that uh, this, the Sloan C conference is, uh, we run the pre-conference as a part of the annual Sloan C event. This registration does not cover the entire conference. This covers the, the fee that you would pay to go to attend a pre-conference session. Uh, and I believe, again, that fee is something on the order of $120 or $130. Um, please keep in mind that you are responsible for all of your personal travel to get to and from State College, um, all of your meals that you might incur during travel, and while you're here, all lodging. That is not provided as uh, part of the fee structure. Uh, so if you have any questions around that, if I can be more specific, please uh, post those in the chat box and we'll keep an eye on those. So um, with that, if you have um, further interest in, in the program, I encourage you to uh, visit our website. Uh, as of yesterday, I believe the application process uh, is actually um, online and available. Bruce is going to speak to that in just a moment. Um, but our outreach.psu.edu uh, backslash emerging hyphen leadership uh, website will give you a pretty good overview of uh, the program. It has the key critical dates in it. Uh, there's, as we mentioned before, there's an application process that closes uh, in April. So from today and through April, uh, we will get applications. We begin vetting those as soon as we have a critical mass. So the, as soon as Bruce and I see the first 10 or so come in, uh, we begin to review those and get back to people as quickly as we possibly can uh, regarding their, uh, their acceptance into the program. So uh, we understand uh, you're trying to make plans. Uh, this is a time commitment, and we want to honor that. Um, so we, we do try to be as responsive as we possibly can to that, uh, that, that component. So Bruce, do you want to speak through the um, program deadlines? Yes, Larry, happy to. I had to get my, uh, had to click on the uh, microphone. Uh, a couple of things, and, and I'm, I'm not going to read you the dates. You have a sense. Larry mentioned the April 26th deadline. Uh, and the fact that this is kind of a rolling admission process. We, uh, I want to stress two things that Larry said earlier. One is we are really looking for those individuals who are either uh, kind of emerging leaders are in leadership positions or wish to be in leadership positions. So uh, we do spend time. We do ask a series of questions. There is an admissions process, if you will, as Larry suggested, trying to make sure uh, that the fit is, is right. Uh, and. Uh, um, and so I, I did want to underscore that. Uh, secondly, that um, we, we will begin the process of review. The maximum number of students uh, in the program is 40. Uh, I think the last two years we've hit that mark and uh, ended up with 37 or 8 or 9. Um, sometimes life gets in the way. We've had a few instances where someone uh, has switched jobs over the summer and so was not able to attend. Um, but uh, but the maximum number would be would be 40, and um, 
we try to get you um, engaged and aware as soon as possible about your or participation in the program. Um, there's a deadline for registering of July the 1st, and um, and then soon thereafter we begin the the, uh, the primer, and um, so that's essentially the admissions uh, process, and I think that takes us up, Larry, to questions. And I know we've gotten a few in the chat room, um, but uh, let's go ahead and begin that process of uh, responding sure. to additional questions. I see um, the question that uh, Banning Larry asks uh, has to do with the the networking and the richness of the conversations. He says, what kind of practical results can be expected? And I, I think there are really two primary ones I would focus on, and Bruce and Kathleen may have others. Um, the first is a, a sensitivity and an awareness of, of what, where you are positioned currently, where your skill sets reside in terms of your own leadership ability. Uh, we do a, a, a sort of a personnel profile uh, type activity that where we help you understand a little bit more about your preferences toward uh, toward leadership and toward management and communications, and um, and then we use that throughout the program to to help you do some self reflection about what um, uh, what needs you might have. Now I have to tell you, there are people who have left this program and have kind of determined that they are not interested in the next level of leadership in their organization. And you might think that that's a failure, but our job, we see it not so much as asking if um, uh, you're encouraging or forcing someone into a leadership role, it's to ask that question of, are you ready? Is this an orientation that you wish to take? Think about this in terms of your career. Um, if this is a, a, a idea that you're, you're presenting or that perhaps someone else has presented to you in terms of how you might serve uh, at a larger level in your organization, it is a good thing to know uh, how you're oriented toward that, uh, whether that fits your personal goals and, and um, interest, uh, or perhaps perhaps you want to stay at a, at a certain level, and that's uh, we think it's good to know. The second thing I, I believe that is really helpful, and again, this is not a mandatory exercise, but it, the second part of the online program is really directed toward a, a project that you would identify within your institution. And we've had some really rich projects brought to the table. So if you think about it this way, we, have, we are organizing a variety up to eight or nine pretty high level, well experienced uh, faculty members to interact with you, sort of as your consultants. On top of that, we're surrounding you with other individuals who are who, who represent a wide range of skill sets and experiences in online learning. And uh, both of these resources could be brought to bear on a particular problem or project that you may have. Uh, Kathleen mentioned early in, earlier, you get from this program what you put into it. So when individuals leave and, and they identify, oftentimes working with the senior leadership in their own program, um, a, a, an aspect of online learning they wish to address, they can use IELOL as the sounding board. You can tap into the consultants, you can tap into your network, and you come out with a very practical uh, a project in the end. And we've seen that happen, and people still talk about this to the day. Uh, Kathleen mentioned about that network. Uh, there's probably not a week that goes by that I don't get some communications, uh, a phone call, a Skype call, something with our participants, uh, because they, they keep in touch and they want to bounce ideas. It really is that richness of the network. Um, a couple other questions. Bruce, I haven't been following. Is there anything there you want to pick up on? Uh, there. There are several, Larry. Let me just pick up a couple of them. I've responded to a couple of them um, um, with my slow typing skills, but I think I got, I got the message out. I did want to go back to a question by Jay Oliver, um, who's, who said, if, you want to, uh, if I just want to improve my leadership to explore new initiatives for online, would this be appropriate? I've been in a leadership role for several years, but I feel like I've stagnated. Uh, and, the, and the short answer to that is is yes. Uh, we have in fact had a range 
uh, of, uh, of individuals who are already, some of them in major leadership uh, responsibilities in online learning within their institution. Uh, we're talking at the at executive levels, at the vice presidency, uh, your equivalent of provost, uh, uh, deans, we've had several deans. Um, so, so that's clearly the case and, and again our focus is on trying to bring some added dimension to this notion of leadership in the emerging online environment. Uh, there was a question, Larry, I think I responded to that someone said, uh, could they pay after July the 1st because they could then kind of, kind of work that into the next fiscal year and I said uh, that those are arrangements that we certainly can, uh, can make and accommodate. Uh, with individuals. Um. Yes, that's a good response, Bruce. Um, we are able to to work with you on that uh, in, in many cases, and, and this is this is an investment, uh, obviously, by your institution as much as uh, five thousand uh, dollars by time they get you here and house you and so forth. And so we recognize that that is a large investment that you may not have budgeted for this year. So. Uh, if it works for you to be able to saddle to fiscal years, uh, June and July, our folks can work with you on that. Uh, don't, don't let that be a hesitation for you, uh, I at least in applying. One of the things, and, and I'm glad I just thought of this note to, to make, one of the things that we have encouraged individuals to do is to make sure, secure your uh, commitment to funding before you apply. And um, we've had the, in the first year or so of offering the program, we did not have that requirement or that we did not ask people to do that. And what happened was they would go out, they would make the application, they would spend time in getting their nominations, then they would apply and they would get accepted, only then to go back to their, um, their supervisor who said, uh, nice idea, but we really don't have the funds for that. So what we're encouraging you to do, and we ask you to actually indicate on your uh, application form that you have looked for the uh, appropriate funding and that you would be covered if your, if your application is accepted, that uh, you, you would be able to cover those fees. Um, another question came up here is was, when speaking of online learning, does it include other types of emerging technologies such as mobile, uh, social media and so forth. And the answer to that one again would be a qualified yes. Keep in mind we're not we're not dealing individually with mobile technologies or social media. They are a component of online learning. Um, and again, I, you'll have this uh, um, observation when you listen to our international partners in particular. Uh, the way they define online learning and the technologies they use may be very different than what we think of uh, here in the United States. So um, we, do t we do cover them, but keep in mind, not at the, not at the technology level. We're not, we're not doing hands-on technology exploration. We're not, we're not talking about managing your IT department. This is a professional development program in an emerging, uh, a quickly, rapidly emerging field of online learning, and we're helping to prepare you to step into a leadership role in that context. Uh, Larry, there was a question uh, about costs uh, on ground, and, and we can certainly provide those. The, the, the conference is held, as we've mentioned, uh, the the face-to-face -face portion of it, uh, on the Penn State campus um, at the Nittany Lion Inn, uh, and so uh, rooms are, are managed there, and our actual meeting areas are within that facility as well. So I'm sure that we could, uh, Larry, post to the website um, the information about the the uh, the inn and the costs associated with staying at the inn. Yes, there's a a link there. If you look on your screen, there there'll be location and accommodations. Uh, we'll have that. A question uh, has to do with our dorm accommodations available. I'm going to presume. Um, that's in order to maybe minimize your cost. We've not been able to do that in the past. Um, we can inquire into that this year, but uh, our experience has been most individuals, well, to be honest, all individuals have wanted to be in the same place uh, because we are really dealing, uh, we, because it is that immersive experience. And so your access to your hotel room upstairs from the conference center is, uh, most people find very, very important. Um, 
question here about leadership areas of topics. Uh, this has changed slightly over the years, and um, the nature of what emerged has really been around um, the topics have really sort of coalesced around the idea of managing in times of change and uh, and and working with a let's say a disruptive field of technology within a mainstream institution. Uh, what that means in terms of policy and in governance, uh, what that means in terms of the relationships you might have with uh, traditional resident-based programs, uh, it, it extremely, it's extremely variable. And, and that's what we're trying to uh, use as the background, the conversation about, well, what are the strategies that you might use in order to be most effective in this space? And, um, and you'll hear some real stories uh, of individuals. Everything that is said, we have a role that we state on the very first day. Everything that is said in IELOL stays in IELOL. Um, but you'll hear stories from people and you'll, and you'll resonate and say, yeah, that, you know, that's very similar to my situation right now. Um, whether it's dealing with faculty, whether it's dealing with the administration or students, uh, there's lots of, um, lots of change that, is, that we're undergoing and, and that's really what we're trying to, um, trying to get our arms around a little bit. And, and Larry, let me just jump in on a couple of other uh, topics that have come up. Uh, one was a question about blended learning, since we are essentially using a blended learning format for this program, for the Institute. And indeed, uh, blended learning is on the table. Uh, in fact, there's clear evidence that that, is, that continues to be an increasingly uh, a valuable and, and, and highly viewed format for, uh, for uh, kind of bridging, the, if you will, the online uh, with the traditional classroom settings. And so clearly there will be uh, consideration for that. Uh, and there's also a question about the nomination process. Um, a question from Tracy Kosker about, I do not see that as part of the application, so I was wondering how that works. Uh, within the application, if you self-nominate or essentially apply, there will be a, a, a requirement that you have someone submit a letter of support, transmit a letter of support, it can be done by email, obviously. Um, for your participation. Actually, Bruce, can I just interrupt? Sure. Um, I'm just looking at the application page, which I said uh, earlier, just opened yesterday. And, and if you scroll down to the bottom of that application document, you'll see a field that, re that has 200 words or less, um, because sometimes people can hand in quite long um, documents. But this is where you would then uh, copy and paste would be the easiest way to do it. A support statement uh, from someone who would be, in go. essence, nominating. Uh, there was a question in here as well, is it better to have more than one person nominate you? You're more than welcome to do that. We'd still ask that you adhere to the 200 word limit. Uh, that just makes our review of, of numerous applications uh, a bit easier. Yeah, and Larry, I, I would just to, to expand on your, on your response, which, is, which was very helpful. Um, what we're really looking for is for someone within your institution or organizational setting who could speak to and be supportive of you're engaging either uh, on a pathway to a leadership position or that you're in a, currently in a leadership position. So again, it goes back to that kind of fit or context, if you will, of where you are in your organization uh, and, uh, and the, the leadership dimension of this, of this particular program. Terrific. Thank you, Bruce. So let me just glance over here at the chat box and see if there are any others. It looks like we have addressed, uh, please send out the link. I know that um, uh, our Sloan C colleagues, uh, Zarin and company, will be, will be sending out the link to you. Uh, and you'll be able then to, to replay this should you want to. Um, if you feel like you need to have the actual PowerPoint uh, presentation for this program, uh, I would be happy to send that to you or Bruce would. We, that would be no problem. Uh, just let us know that. Um, I'll put my email down here at the bottom of the, um, of the chat box um, and I can read it to you as well. Uh, it is lcr1 at psu.edu. So if you have questions or you need additional information, uh, just let us know and uh, we'll be happy to help you in any ways. I've even had individuals who have said, hey, would you mind talking to my supervisor so that uh, they better understand what, um, you know, where the program uh, is aligned and if, if 
this is a good program for me, and we're happy to do that. However, we can however we can help out, we'd be happy to do that. So with that, um, again, thank you so much for your attention today and your interest in the program. Uh, we'd love to see uh, a, a great response to the program. Uh, we do think that it has great value. That's why we do it. Uh, it's it's a wonderful growth opportunity for us as well, and a good way to keep connected in with that uh, the new and emerging leadership in our field, uh, which is very exciting. So, uh, thank you all. And um, Zarin, I think we're going to sign off at this point. Yes, and and uh, Larry, just to let me add my uh, my thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, to you, it's great working with you and Kathleen and Zarin for your assistance in uh, helping us put all this together. Thanks very much. Thank you all, gang. Take care. Uh, thank you all, uh, especially Larry, Bruce, and Kathleen for this very informative webinar. And of course, many thanks to all of you who joined us today and enriched our discussions with your questions and comments. Uh, as Larry mentioned, all participants in today's webinar and also the registrants will be receiving a follow-up email and a recording link. Uh, we realize that there is some issue with uh, Java updates lately, so we will also make a YouTube video of the webinar available uh, within a day or two. Please check back on our website. And I will also be following up with a uh, survey about this webinar. Uh, your comments are extremely helpful and we appreciate your taking the time to complete these surveys. It just takes a few minutes and I put the link in the chat window. And I would also like to take this opportunity to highlight some upcoming Sloan C Institute events that uh, you might be interested in. We have our uh, 2013 workshop schedule available at our web, uh, website on the URL uh, on the slide. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, series of webinars, accessibility webinar series, two of which have already been completed and we have two more to go. Next one is on March 14th and the last one is April 23rd. 23rd. Uh, these are free webinars and uh, they really have great panelists, so I encourage all of you to just sign up for those. All you need is a free, uh, just getting a free Sloan C uh, membership through our website. Our next conference is 6th Annual International Symposium, Emerging Technologies for Online Learning. We will be holding it in Las Vegas, Nevada, April 9th through 11th. We also have a virtual option for those who won't be able to make it there in person. With that, I want to thank you again for joining us, and we hope